Hey guys, I just wanted to make a quick uh, tips and tricks video on how we can use this tool, the EEV Mate, and how it kind of behaves when um, things aren't working correctly, the valve isn't moving, we can't understand why the tool can't open or close the valve, and there are some features in the tool that we can use to kind of identify those things. So I'm going to start with, um, the first thing that you need to do is verify that your um, EEV motor has good continuity between its windings. So for that, you're gonna need micro leads. This is a five wire motor and red is our common. The manufacturer's specs say that it should be about 150 ohms between the phases. So from common to our first phase, we can check 150. And second phase, 150. Third phase, 150. And fourth phase, 150 again. So we can reasonably say that electrically that motor is pretty sound. The next thing that we should look at is, well, we should realize that inside of this tool, there are four built-in LED lights, and each LED light is wired in parallel with each phase output. And it's a two to two uh, phase excitation. So every time it sends a pulse, two of those lights should light up. So I'll dim it down for you. And the way we can check them individually is when you click in on the tool, we're in turbo mode. If I scroll a couple of pulses while still holding it in and returning the joystick back to center, it's gonna hold me on that phase. So I know these two phases are outputting right. I can move to the next one, two, two, and so on, two. So what I want to kind of demonstrate here is what a short would look like. I could have a short in my motor, in my adapter cable, or somewhere internally in the tool. So if I hook up my adapter cable to the tool, and to the motor like so, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this micro lead and short two of these phases. So now my blue and orange phases should be shorted. I'll dim the lights again so you can see. And it's not happening. Where's my third light? Should be. Oh, I saw it for a second. See, right there. So I can see that one of the phases is shorted to another one. Um, it's not going to operate properly, but now we've identified that and we've got to seek out, you know, where it's coming from. The way I would do that is, okay, I've got three components in the mix here, right? It could be the motor, it could be the adapter cable, or it could be the tool. So if I hook the motor, I can run that test again. At that point, I know it's you know, upstream toward the motor. Um, if I still had that short, I'd remove the adapter cable. Try it again. And if I still had those third lights, it would be something internal inside the tool. Likewise, um, if there is a broken wire, some issue internally inside of the tool, that would appear as we're missing one of these four lights. So that's something to keep in mind. Next question I get a lot, you know, um, rotation is not always the same for these motors. This motor in particular 
happens to be up on the joystick opens the valve. Down on the joystick closes the valve. And the distinction that I see pretty common to be is on the wiring configuration here, my common side is here, and then it goes white, yellow, orange, blue. The ones that are reverse rotation that I've seen have been the opposite coordination. So it goes red, blue, orange, yellow, white. Something you're gonna wanna verify. I know there are other color codes out there. Typically what I've seen is that those color codes are to distinct between two different valves or motors that are on the same system but the white, yellow, orange, blue is most common. So if I find that I have one of these on my system, most likely those other odd colors are gonna operate in the same manner. So that in that case, I would assume most likely that system up on my joystick would open, down would close. So let's say, you know, you've checked all this out. We don't have any shorts. We don't have any openings. Our resistance checks out right, but our valve still won't open. The next tool that I like to bring in is called a mechanic stethoscope. So just like a doctor's stethoscope, these go in your ears. And then I can place this probe here on the valve itself and using the tool to drive, I can hear what's going on inside of there. And there's a big distinction between when a valve is moving or when it's um, mechanically seized, bottomed out or topped out. The difference would be, you know, well, you could try it out yourself, but a moving valve, you can hear gears turning, moving that needle in and in or out of the seat. A seized or bottomed or topped valve is going to kind of sound like a clicking noise. So let's say we get there. Um, what do we do next? We think that our valve is mechanically seized. That is where sometimes the turbo mode function on this tool will work. So the pulses per second that your system is typically going to deliver is going to be somewhere around 200 pulses per second or less. I'm sorry, uh, 20 to 25 pulses per second or less. In turbo mode, when we throttle all the way forward or all the way back, we're shooting out two to 225 pulses per second. Sometimes that is enough to jolt that valve unstuck. Um, it may not be a permanent fix, maybe it will be, but it is something that you could try. So what you would do is click in on the joystick and throw that throttle forward you can take your mechanic stethoscope again and, you know, listen to see what's going on. Okay, that's about all I've got for this little short tutorial. I, if anybody has any other questions or wants me to try any other things or highlight anything, let me know. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll leave links for the stethoscope and the website where you can buy the tool down at the bottom. Thanks.